far as guitar goes, I was all about uh, the Jesus and Mary Chain and Johnny Marr, uh, the Smiths. So listening to albums like um, Psycho Candy, Hat Full of Hollow had a huge influence on me. Later on, when I was writing more songs, I, I started making uh, open mics. And then again, you, it's a great exercise with uh, humility because you expose yourself in front of a, a lot of people. You suck, they don't care, they give you unsolicited advice, and you have to just uh, bear and grin, you know? And that's it, you know? And, and you just carry on. And eventually, with the Amber Glows, I felt that it was finally the right combination. My name is Kevin Hills, bass player. Choosing to play bass uh, was easy for me because I started out as a guitar player and uh, I was moved early on by listening to Simon Gallup from The Cure. But later on in the uh, 90s, I got into some groovy stuff when the Manchester scene. Alex James, I would say, from uh, Blur, Peter Hook, you know, the classic ones. That's pretty much what brought me to bass. And I, I, I went to bass and I never, ever, ever looked back afterwards. I just prefer it. Hi there, greetings. Um, Richard here from uh, the Ember Glows, um, lead guitar. Um, I guess uh, looking back uh, to my musical background, uh, well, my parents played a lot of ABBA and Neil Diamond growing up, so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of that in me and in, in my past, So, and that's uh, funny enough still kind of in my background. When I heard uh, the Joshua Tree for the first time, um, it kind of just like gave me that whoa moment. Um, and uh, the edge uh, from U2 was really a, a huge impact on me playing. Um, hearing Where the Streets Have No Name for the very first time gave me all the goosebumps and all that, m you know, music is magic and it really, that moved me very much and that made me, at that moment, maybe not necessarily want to play guitar, but I knew at that moment I wanted to be a part of that sound, gravitate towards that wide cinematic kind of sound and, 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 and my guitar playing is, in a, uh, an influence from that, so uh, with pedals, with uh, how I play and textures and stuff like that. So that really was a catalyst uh, for me moving forward as a guitar player. Music is magic and I'm so thankful for it in my life. Like it's the most important thing besides family and friends and it's, 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 uh, it's magic really. My name is Dan Steffick. I play drums with the Ember Glow. Started on guitar actually uh, in my late teens and I made eventually switch to drums because I think I was just looking for something more physical. I mean, I was a teenager and, and in my 20s and the 90s, and that's a time of great drummers. I think maybe my first inspiration was Neil Peart from Rush, but after that, when you're kind of listening to music in the, at least guitar-oriented music in the 90s, like Soundgarden and Tool and Smashing Pumpkins, you have lots of drummers that are inspiring you. So. I've never stopped playing guitar, but um, I'm currently playing uh, uh, drums in a couple of bands.
Montréal. Si vous deviez nous parler de, de votre identité musicale. Ben, je pense euh, en premier, on est un, un band rock, comme New Wave, un peu britannique. On fit un peu partout là-dedans, mais pas 100% dans quoi que ce soit. Exactement. Comme si on dit New Wave, on n'est pas un band typique New Wave. Non. non. Parce qu'on n'est qu est... pas électronique comme... Euh, non. Puis, euh, c'est pas Call Wave image. too. Non. Mais il y a des éléments. On n'est pas rock, on n'est pas un blues, on n'est pas rock and roll. Exactement. Non plus. Euh, on est un peu atmosphérique, mais on n'est pas ambiant. Mm. On n'est pas quelque chose d'ambiant non plus. Et on est un peu pas. Ouais. Oui. Donc, moi, oui. je me dis toujours comme... Uh, the music I like has to have interesting lyrics, a solid groove, yeah. and books. And I think we have yeah, totally. all these three elements. Ça m'a fait penser un petit peu aussi au niveau de la voix à One The Hand. Je trouve ça toujours intéressant de me faire vocalement, ouais. comparer quelque chose que je connais pas. Ouais, ça ben oui. Puis d'ailleurs, ça m'est arrivé euh, assez souvent. Puis je me dis que c'est une bonne chose parce que ça veut dire que je sonne pas comme un truc, si on dit que tu sonnes comme 10 trucs différents, ça veut dire qu'en fait, tu sonnes comme aucun. Exact. Aucun de manière identique. Euh, moi, je pense que The Amber Glow, c'est unique à Montréal. Je pense que oui, ouais. Yeah. Je, je, il n'y a pas beaucoup d'autres bands comme nous, je pense. Vraiment que, pas. Ouais. Puis Vraiment euh, pas. ça nous aide, je pense, euh, à être différent. Oui, 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 oui. When Spirits Play est sorti en septembre. Je pense que c'est un album que vous avez créé durant la pandémie. Comment ça s'est passé? Parce que vous avez d'autres albums avant. Celui-là, il a été particulier, je pense, parce que vous l'avez créé durant la pandémie. We were, you know, annoyed as everybody yeah. else was. Yeah. <laughs> Dans un espace créatif que we couldn't always get together. So, okay. définitivement frustrant. Depending on what, what the color of the alerts were. Okay. Exactly. Like sometimes yeah. when it was red, it was off limits, we couldn't. Then it got orange, so it was okay within like certain restrictions, mm. with a certain amount of distancing, you know? Right. But what was cool is that we always stayed in touch. We talked almost every day so we still okay. made we, we made the best of it then we uh, we had a sense of direction of what we wanted to do and then when we recorded that two song performance for uh, cmw canadian music week yeah. that was in a church yeah. in drummondville that was quite the adventure we get to drummondville at 5 36 yeah. ish then we rush like madmen <laughs> and then after that we just pack our things okay jump in the car and then race like wild it was like racing against time we're just checking our, our phones watches whatever mm -hmm. then let's go 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 make it and then we have to go rush to the rehearsal space Trail unload up. and then just dash out maybe it made us more focused maybe like yeah. uh, on certain things because well, we knew we had to kind of concentrate it uh, concentrate on it and, and get it done kind of thing so uh like a song like sign on love mm -hmm. is very much like that like we were always yeah. talked about like it's it's He brought in the idea and, uh, and and the lyrics, and we started jamming to it in the jam space, and it just boom. Our first rehearsal of it is, yeah. is almost similar to what it is now. So it's it's. Mm. I tried to come up with, you know, uh, some kind of epic riff, and uh, yeah. that's kind of my job in the band. But like, <laughs> I have to do the best riff. Not the, yeah. not the best, but just something like that, best, that yeah. pleases me and and, yeah. and sticks to my my roots and what I love, okay. which is generally always something cinematic and and wide. So that's. That's what I was going for, and it, and it worked, and and it was a very visceral yeah, experience yeah, coming absolutely. up with that song. And a lot of our songs come up that way. So. Yeah. the near 
comment s'est passé votre show Fungeon Le concept que j'ai vraiment trouvé très drôle, c'est Ask a Friend Basement Venue. We were not allowed to say the address. It was really Ask a Punk Joe who who runs the place. Ouais. Uh, great guy, mm. super welcoming, very uh, very charming, very just a, a great guy who is uh, who is is doing something. I think that's important and that I wish more people are doing in Montreal. So as mentioned, a lot of places have closed. Uh, yeah. A lot of DIY places have closed mm. down, which is really unfortunate for the scene. Yeah and for, uh, you know, creative bands and whatever. I like what he's doing and I like yeah. where it's going and I wish there were more places like that. So yeah. uh, we had a good time there. I think it was very raw and very uh, in your face. Uh, Joe's very, uh, he exudes a lot of life. He's very welcoming. Yeah. And, you know, he just does it for the love of the scene. Personally, I don't want to play the same two, three venues and then start over again and start a whole cycle again, 10 times over. Yeah. So I find that it, it would be interesting if there were more Uh, happenings like uh, multidisciplinary um, happenings where you can have like live painting, you could have, I don't know, improvised theater, whatever it is. Visual, Just, like, artistry, you know, visual yeah. arts, yeah. like projections in lofts, private parties, basements, mm. anything out of this um, this fishbowl. It gives an experience, not only for the band, but for the spectators. Yeah, yeah exactly. C est, c est je me souviens de voir des shows comme ça, puis comme on, je disais tout à l'heure, il ouais. euh, y avait un show des années, dans les années 90, j'ai vu, je pense c'est Godspeed, Fly Pan Am, puis euh, Do Makes a Think dans un vieux warehouse. Mm. Euh, puis c'était une expérience que j'ai toujours... I always remember that. It was just mm. like, wow, this is incredible. You know, what mm. an experience. Moi, je sais, par exemple, c'est le Divan Orange. Mm. Quand je suis arrivé à Montréal, il y a 15 ans, I fell in love with this place, seriously. Uh, I would have loved for us to have played there. Yeah. It was right on Saint Laurent. It's a great venue. It was a cool room. The stage yeah. was nice and elevated. And, mm. and I've seen many shows there that were just packed and they were sweaty and it was great. You that know, was always vibe. packed. Yeah. Uh, I really, I miss that place for sure. And mm. uh, the other one for me would be La Vitrola. Uh, I wish Vitrola was oh, still hey. around. Super. Uh, it's now turned into more of a, a club, I believe. Ouais. But uh, as far as a live venue, that was really fun to play at too. Yeah. Moi, c'est simple, c'est l'escalier. Ouais. Parce que Très je, dois, je dois beaucoup à cette place-là. OK. Énormément parce que euh, pendant six ans de ma vie, j'ai joué là pratiquement chaque mois, ou presque, okay. en résidence solo. OK. Puis je jouais deux heures, deux, euh, deux sets de 45 minutes. Wow. À peu près tout seul devant souvent une, euh, un endroit assez plein. Oui soir après soir. Quand ça a fermé et que j'ai vu que ça rouvrirait plus, j'ai senti que c'était vraiment comme un, un chapitre personnel qui fermait. Il fallait, fallait que je passe à autre chose. Ouais, ouais. Mais euh, ça, a, ça a été vraiment... Euh, C'est une place qui me manque beaucoup. Très important de le mentionner parce que moi, en tant euh, qu'étudiant à l'UCAM, c'est une place où j'allais beaucoup aussi. On, on, on s'est peut-être croisés. Les mêmes sûrement, sûrement, parce que c'est vrai que j'aimais beaucoup la vibe. Et je trouvais que c'était très familial dans le staff en cuisine, dans le staff aussi dans la salle. C'était très euh, des gens qui aidaient d'autres gens à get a job et nanana, puis à rester là, puis à avoir des repas aussi. Bah, ouais, comme tu disais, avoir plein de choses, tu vois. Donc, euh... Ah oui, c'est inoubliable pour moi. You gotta support your local venues, you have to do ouais. it. Like, uh, go have beers, go, go watch a band that you don't know and then you get, get exposed to things and that's it's so important so mm. to keep the scene alive. So. Vraiment, vraiment, vraiment. Comment vous voyez l'année prochaine? We, we pretty much think along the same, same lines, but uh, I'm the type of person that really just wants to get it done. Like, okay. not, not done, I want to complete things. If we talk about something, I want to make it happen. Mm. So I, I want us to like move forward with, you know, I want to opening slots for big bands and yeah. like Corona or whatever, or somewhere, you know, and mm. uh, festivals, you want to look into festivals. We were constantly making music, so we want to record another album already. So it's like... The thing is, you can't miss the starting gun because we've just like, waited around and not done anything during the pandemic where will we we be now we've kind of like given ourselves a, a good warm-up and now like let's go you know like so we want some good things in 2023 and it's going to happen something's going to happen but like, yes yeah
I have a really terrible Nirvana story to tell. I'll tell it off camera. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, went, I got tickets for Nirvana with a buddy of mine, Paul, back in the day at the Verdun Auditorium. This is the famous Verdun Auditorium show, yeah. Nirvana. We thought another band was going to open up because we, we had heard in, from the grapevine that this band, I can't remember the name of the band even, to be honest with you, they were going to open up. Turns out they didn't open up. And I was in my kind of like too cool for school phase of like the grunge period. And we went to the Verdun Auditorium to sell our, to scalp our tickets. And we couldn't even scalp our tickets. We didn't try that hard, but we couldn't scalp our tickets. And we took our Nirvana tickets and we left them in a bus shelter. You're kidding. And we went home and we didn't even go to see the show. <laughs> 